Imagine talking to a woman. Now imagine talking to a woman, only to find that she was an inanimate object the whole time. In 2013, a Florida woman broke the internet when she revealed that she was actually a sentient period pad, merely disguised as a human being. And as online sleuths began to take a closer look at her utterly baffling web presence, a dark story of obsession, werewolf diapers, and kiwi farms began to take shape. So, who is she? What? is a pad sona. And what happens when online delusions go unchecked? This is the bloody ballad of the feminine pad. This is The Freaky Files. Today's video has been kindly sponsored by Rocket Money. More on them later. It all went down in 2013. The infamous dank Shrek wave was right around the corner. Papa Franco was popping, and some white guy made a mortal enemy of the CIA. But in Panama City, Florida, a mysterious online figure is about to blow all of these headlines out of the water. Starting early that year, DeviantArt user The Feminine Pad, on one of her several accounts, begins uploading hundreds of terrifying flash photos of pads at every conceivable angle, poetry about drinking blood, and journal entries detailing her upcoming transformation into a pink Kotex menstrual pad. Fascinated by her inexplicable dedication to her craft, internet users began documenting her activity on a website called Kiwi Farms. And the backlash was instantaneous. Users across multiple sites called for her swift removal from the internet, complained that this was somehow the fault of the Bush administration, and one intrepid commenter even suggested that she should be electrocuted. And within a few short weeks, dozens of near-identical articles followed, outlining her obsession and asking, rather naively, if all of this was just an elaborate troll. But you're a handsome and very smart internet user. And you probably know better than that. Because unlike your typical online sex weirdo, the feminine pad vehemently denies that this is a fetish. Even after she legally changed her name to pad. But before we dive into any of that, a quick timeline. Spring of 2013. On March 8th, Kiwi Farms user LM697 stumbles across Pad's DeviantArt account and creates a thread to discuss it. Users immediately reacted with shock and revulsion. Surely, this had to be a joke. And even though they wanted to believe, skeptical users had to admit that the amount of money Pad must have spent on her extensive collection was probably far beyond what anyone would spend on a prank. But word quickly spread from Kiwi Farms farms to Tumblr to the press. On April 8th, an explosive article by the Daily Dot finally put a face to the name. Pad Gardner, who would transition shortly thereafter, is described as a huge Twilight fan, ardent supporter of gay rights, and desperately in need of help fulfilling her ultimate goal of spending eight hours pressed up against a yoni. Her words, as an overnight pad. And before the story even had a chance to get filed away as just another internet oddity, a legendary werewolf diaper crossover would put our winged wonder on the map. During this time, an obscure piece of fetish art titled The Wear Diaper had been making the rounds on Reddit and 4chan, a source of endless amusement and disgust for anyone who saw it. And if you haven't, it depicts a man turning into a diaper under the full moon. A wear diaper. This is called inanimate object transformation. And like with Pad's extensive fantasies about turning into a pad, the wear diaper emphasizes becoming powerless, transforming into a dirty diaper, or a soiled pad, and being thrown in the trash. People with this fetish want to feel helpless in a controlled environment. And when you throw in the aspects of bodily waste, humiliation, and being thrown in the garbage, which Pad has repeatedly expressed a desire to experience, it's pretty solidly in DeviantArt fetish territory. But Pad's notoriety was incredibly short-lived compared to the much-beloved wear diaper. And by fall of 2014, press coverage had completely died off. But behind the scenes, Pad remained as active as ever, uploading mind-blowing amounts of period photography and even designing a Pad Sona. A Pad Persona. And I've gone out of my way to avoid touching on the fetish angle because, frankly, it's not clear to me that this is a fetish, but it definitely feels like it. So let's figure out why. This is deserving of its own video, but for now, I'm gonna show you the quick and dirty on how to know when you're looking at fetish art. One, repetition. If the artist needlessly consistently repeats a phrase, a full brand name, or a visual motif to the extent that it is very noticeable, it's probably because they find it gratifying. Case in point, 22 nearly identical photographs titled some variation of Equate Overnight Pad with Wings. 
two, inappropriate emphasis. If it's an otherwise normal image or story with a strong emphasis on what should be an irrelevant detail, like the shininess of clothes, the discomfort of an overfull belly, or the exact make and model of the hook prosthetic a female double below elbow amputee might be wearing to school, that's usually a dead giveaway. Three, oh no, the big lady sat on me. What does this mean? Fetish fiction, though not all, has a tendency to force the protagonist to engage in their fetish either by accident, through a bizarre series of coincidences, or flat out against their will. That's more of a universal tendency of erotic fiction, but it is extremely pervasive in fetish art. And this is by no means a scientific analysis, but fetish art is a very vibes-based field of study. If your gut is telling you that someone somewhere is getting off to this, it's probably because they are. But in the case of the feminine pad, she really only meets the first criteria in the case of the constant repetition. And she has been insistent that there is nothing sexual about this to her. Fetish artists generally don't deny the nature of their work. It's how they make their living. But if you're still 100% convinced that this is just a weirdo with a fetish, then let's draw a comparison to the actual next closest thing, the Wonder Bread guy. So if you don't know, the Wonder Bread guy, also known as Merlogic, is an infamous internet fetishist who has spent upwards of tens of thousands of dollars commissioning artists to draw rich, evil milfs buying demented amounts of Wonder Bread at the store. He also likes deforestation art, but the Wonder Bread is primarily his bag. The Wonder Bread thing is significantly less sexually charged than the pad thing, for sure. But there's a weird, repetitive, almost loud quality about all of this artwork that is simply missing from Pad's photography. However, both Pad and the Wonder Bread guy did spend ridiculous sums of money on their obsessions, far exceeding what a reasonable person might. And if you need help dialing back on your spending, you'll probably love Rocket Money. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower your bills, and manage your money better. I love how easy they make it to cancel subscriptions that you've forgotten about. Rocket Money safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. You can cancel from within the app with just a few taps, so there's no need to spend hours calling and emailing customer service. Which really comes in handy for when I signed up to Hulu three months ago to watch one movie for video research, completely forgot about about it and have been getting charged ever since. Rocket Money has helped its customers save up to $740 a year when you use all of the app's premium features, with over $500 million saved in canceled subscriptions. And best of all, it's free to download right now. Take charge of your finances today and go to rocketmoney.com scum or use the link in my description to get started for free. Thank you so much to Rocket Money for kindly sponsoring today's video. And on with the show. So hold up. I hear you say, who cares? Why does this even matter? Well, it wouldn't if not for the fact that PAD is also a periods rights activist. It's time to talk about optics. Let's remember 2013. Pop feminism had just exploded onto the scene, and with it came a smattering of hilariously bad Tumblr activism. And Pad wanted in. A former Christian who renounced the faith due to what she felt was excessive bigotry, Pad's obsession was undeterred, and during her explosive one month of fame in 2013, she took advantage of the spotlight and launched a Kickstarter to walk across America to raise awareness about toxic shock syndrome and promote the wearing of pads. It raised $164. But to be clear, period poverty is a real issue, even in the US. Women who can't afford these products often miss out on work, school, and socialization. In some parts of India and Nepal, women are banished to so-called menstrual huts, where they spend a week or more in dangerous, often life-threatening conditions, without access to fresh food, ventilation, or indoor plumbing. But this is the internet, and optics matter. As this 2014 article so bluntly puts it, when someone this extreme enters the public discourse and becomes a voice for marginalized people, the entire fight gets undermined and sidetracked. Gardner has openly discussed his sexual abuse, and some believe this is his way of working through it. We're inclined to agree. It's unlikely that someone who suffered at the hand of this kind of molestation wouldn't possess some sort of psychological fallout. There's a reason Meet the Man Who Wants to Be a Kotex saturates headlines. It's strange and salacious and inspires a certain amount of pity. Feminist or not, Gardner isn't helping to advance a real agenda of gender equality. And really think about it. Why would someone develop this type of obsession provided it's not a fetish? 
It could be OCD, it could be autistic hyperfixation, or in Pad's case, it could be significant childhood trauma, about which she's been pretty open. And the main factor that gives me pause to call this a fetish is that weird tension between Pad obsession and activism aside, it's hard not to get the impression that Pad is just a deeply traumatized person who found a very unorthodox means of dealing with it and a very misguided way of making positive change. It just so happens to walk and talk exactly like a standard DeviantArt fetish. And in all honesty, it's a little tricky to accept free pads and advocacy from a person who would be more than willing to be a pad for you. And that brings us to today. After her brief time in the limelight, Pad seemingly deleted all traces of her web presence. All that remains are several articles and her self-published vampire novel, Convergence, The Nebulous Blood Chronicles. But in somewhat of a mixed blessing, her Kiwi Farms thread ended up being the greatest wealth of information about her and from her directly. But for the moment, she seems to have completely abandoned her online pad Sona, and left behind one of the more incomplete and mysterious case studies of what happens when hyperfixation goes unchecked. Because at the end of the day, she's not harming anybody, and all she really wants is to spread her wings. This has been The Freaky Files.